Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here. Welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Up to date it is an absolute classic Hornby steam locomotive that it really is about time I tried. The Stania Black 5 is so well known and it's so ubiquitous that the fact that I've never reviewed the proper Hornby one is a bit strange quite frankly. I do have the Hornby Railroad version over there which I absolutely love but for years and years I dreamed of trying the proper full fat Hornby Railways version and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today so I'm really really excited. So for the first time ever here is the Hornby Railways Black 5. And yeah, sure, I really, really am looking forward to this. It's quite an expensive one. I perhaps paid a little bit more than I ought to have done for this just because I wanted one so badly. The RRP is £169.99, I think. Ooh, it's quite a lot. And I paid £127. However, I do think I overpaid because I think it was Amazon. I found these on Amazon more recently, it was typical, for much, much less. And if they're still available at the time of this review going out, I will include an affiliate link down in the description. So it's a very expensive model. I believe it has been around for quite some time, so I'm not too sure how to manage my expectations with this one. Hopefully, though, it will impress me. Hopefully, it will look and run better than the Hornby Railroad one. And most importantly, hopefully, we'll all really enjoy it today. So let's get this out. Finally, let's satisfy my curiosity and let's see what this baby is like. So this is very much what I've always wanted, the super detailed Black 5 in the LMS Black. It's got to be the LMS Black for me because that's how they started life and this way there's no way of getting it confused with the Standard 5 uh, in terms of the BR liveries and such. And also, just on a like a personal preference note, that red lining is just fantastic, isn't it? Just finishes it off, sets it apart a little bit from the other freight locomotives, which maybe are in a slightly more boring livery. Is that a terrible thing to say? Well, that's what I think anyway. Anyway, let me show you the end of the box. So the product code for this version is R3616. It's an LMS 460 class five, and mine is number 5089. And I will just show you the back of the box because you can see this was classified as a 5MT. Yeah, no huge surprise there. I guess that was obvious. In the middle, you have the history of the class. As always, if you want to pause and read that, feel free to. Very interesting locos. And then this part surprised me on the end of the box. My favourite part, the diagrams, uh, Hornby's diagrams for the design of the model, dated 2002. I had no idea this dated back as far as that. So that has got me questioning a little bit, really. I mean, because this is very expensive, 169.99 as the RRP. How detailed is this going to be for nearly 20 years old? I don't know. I don't know. That's got me worried. Is this going to impress me? I don't know. Uh, we shall. I guess we'll just have to find out. There's no other way to do it. So are you ready? Let's get this out. Let's have a look for the first time. Not had this out yet. That was difficult. But sure, this is something I've always wanted, so definitely going to enjoy this. Okay, there it is. It's, it's in there. That's good news. And I can already see that red lining, which is awesome. Okay, come on then. Come on. Let's see what it's like. How does the weight feel? Uh, yeah, it feels, it feels about average. It doesn't seem uh, remarkably light or heavy at the moment. So we'll see what that's like when I get it out. Okay, the operation and maintenance guide here for the Class 5. Let's have a quick look. Oh, this is always so interesting because I like to look at the mechanisms, although there's very little in terms of mechanism in here. Bit about lubrication, yeah, that's all standard. How to remove the body, I will be doing that at some point. It looks as though the tender, at least, has had some upgrades, doesn't it? That does not look like a 2002 tender with the speaker housing and whatnot. So, yeah, obviously, Hornby have done some upgrades on this, which is good. On the back, nothing at all of interest there. So that's cool. We can get on to the loco. Okay, do we have accessories with this? Yeah, we've got some sort of accessories. Let's take a look then. Oh, this is going to be so cool. Okay, let's see what is in the accessories bag. Okay, so in all, quite a bit. So quite obviously, we've got some brake rigging for both loco and tender. Oh, this does not look very promising. Look at that coupling. That is not a standard NEM coupling. <laughs> that looks more like the old Airfix coupling. So that's a bit dated, really. Could we not have done away with that, Hornby? 
I don't know. Then we've got a screw. That must be for the coupling as well. Oh, come on. Screwing couplings on. Those days are gone. And also some steps as well, which we can fit. All right. So seriously, no NEM couplings. Well, that's for the front. Maybe, hopefully, the tender will have had a NEM coupling put on. Hopefully. Right. Shall we do this then? Yeah, let's get this out and find out what this is like. I'm so used to the so basic Hornby Railroad version that I'm just itching to see what this is like. You ready? All right, how is the finish? Do you know what? I don't know if it's just because it's black, but this finish actually looks pretty decent compared with quite a few of Hornby's. Uh, it's not quite as eggshell or whatever satin as some of Backman's locos, but it's not quite as matte as some other Hornby locos I've seen. So that's the first observation. Come on then, let's see what this is like. All right, how's the weight? Yeah, it's not dreadfully heavy. Um, I, I wouldn't say it feels criminally light, but I will get it onto the scales, and let you know uh, what sort of weight we're dealing with here. Um, quite obviously, this is a, an upgrade. This is an improvement over the railroad one. Like I say, I'm very, very familiar with that version. And this does not seem a lot like it. There's clearly a lot more separately fitted parts as opposed to molded details. Everything seems a bit finer, the valve gear and all the coupling and connecting rods, they all look better as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, this actually looks quite decent. I will have to inspect this, of course, and uh, give you a rundown in just a second on uh, the state of the loco and the, the actual level of detail. But on first glance, it looks okay. It looks absolutely fine. The detail looks okay. And I can't see any sort of glue marks or anything broken off it. So, so far, so good. I still think we're in for a, a good review today. First of all, though, before we take a close look, let's have a bit of history on the Black Fives, because, as I say, they are really, really famous, and it's worth knowing a bit more about them. The Black Five was a legendary design of William Stanier that was first introduced back in 1934 when the first of a whopping 842 locomotives was completed. What an incredible number. The class was intended for mixed traffic and indeed the Black Fives were seen hauling any and all types of service throughout their lifetimes. The design took much inspiration, surprisingly enough, from the Great Western Hall class locomotives, which of course were also hugely successful in their own right. Carried on from the halls was the two outside cylinder design, the general boiler layout, and of course those uh, classic six foot driving wheels. Now due to their success, the class continued to be built for several years, even after the nationalisation of 1948 by British Railways. Beyond this, the Black Five formed the basis of the BR Standard Class Five, of which 172 were produced up until 1957. So, yeah, a long, long serving design. Now, despite nearly 900 examples being produced, only 18 of them remain in preservation today. I mean, it's, it's a fraction, obviously, of what was built, but it's a healthy number by preservation standards. Withdrawal took place between 1961 and 1968, and the final withdrawal did not take place until the very final day of steam on British Railways, which of course is the ultimate testament to their design and their longevity. So there she is then, Hornby's Stania Black 5, the railways version up close and personal for you. And I like this locomotive. I think it looks fantastic and it's a clear improvement over the older Hornby railroad version. However, this is a review, so I've got to be objective and say that I don't know what Hornby are playing at, charging what they are for this locomotive because it's coming up for 20 years old, and for all intents and purposes, that shows. And so it's a bit of an insult to the old intelligence, frankly, because if you compare this to a much more modern locomotive from Hornby that costs £170, the features, the detail, everything else, it's just nothing like. And there's a list of things. I mean, first of all, the Loco is really, really light. It weighs in at 325 grams, which is over 100 grams lighter than the much cheaper Hornby Railroad Black 5. It's even lighter than Backman's Standard Class 4. That's a lighter locomotive in real life, and that didn't even have a tender to add to the weight. And of course, the main reason for the lightweight of this Loco is the plastic running plate, bit of die cast on there would definitely have brought the weight up, made the loco feel better quality and helped to justify the price tag. The plastic of course does not do that. The cab detail is very, very basic as well. It's, you know, it's fine for the early 2000s, but when you pay 170 or even 130 like I did pounds for a modern locomotive, 
you just want a little bit better detail than that, don't you really? And the age of this loco shows through in the construction as well. You've got this very ugly parting line, which is quite messily molded, goes right across the top. And there are even glue marks around some of the various details as well, which is not a serious problem. I've only spotted this in a couple of minor places. But again, as the price goes up, so do the expectations. And therefore, I have no expectation to see glue on a model that's this expensive. So yeah, Hornby, don't insult our intelligence. This is an older model. It's still fine. I'm still happy that I bought it and I'm still pleased with my purchase. But come on, let's have a price that matches what is quite a basic locomotive. However, like I say, I do like this locomotive. Overall, I think the quality is fine. The decoration is fine, that's for sure. Look at the lining here. It's all very nicely done, nice and precise. You do have the proper printed LMS lettering on the side of the cab, which is lovely to see. And you've got the power classifications up there as well. 5P, 5F, it says, which is good. The detailing on the side of the locomotive, particularly around the firebox area, is a noticeable step up from the Railroad Black 5. So you've got a separately fitted, not only separately fitted, but metal reverser rod there, which is great. And all of the various pipe work is now separately fitted on this version, as opposed to just moulded. And I believe the handrails that stretch across the entirety of the boiler and firebox, they're also made of metal and separately fitted. You do have some metal safety valves on here, which have a nice high shine. Great to see that those are not plastic. The whistle behind it is plastic and it shows, obviously it just looks totally different. However, again, unlike the Railroad Black 5, that is a separately fitted piece and that's really good to see. Let's take a look at the cab where we're at it because, well, the actual painted cab detail is naff and lacklustre. There are some nice details surrounding the cab, such as these cab doors. I really like that. That's a nice inclusion. Separately fitted handrails, nice flush glazing, and you've also got the opening air intake on the top, which you can open up. And it actually allows a bit more light into the cab more than anything else so that you can enjoy the, well, <clears throat> lack of detail. The front end of the locomotive looks a bit more modern, to be honest with you. So you've got the smoke box door here, which does have the separately fitted and separately painted dart fitted to it, as well as a lamp iron there and the separately fitted handrail, which is good. Above the buffer beam, there are separately fitted lamp brackets now and little grab rails as well. That was never the case on the railroad one. And while the buffer beam is quite free of detail, it does have these nice separately fitted metal buffers, which are also sprung. Look at that. So <laughs> that's a reasonably modern feature, isn't it? And of course, you've got the coupling hook and the vacuum pipe fitted onto there as well. The tender I like very, very much on this locomotive. Again, the paintwork is fine, the, the lining looks great, as does the LMS lettering on the side. The tender does have quite a lot of riveted detail on it, which I think looks great. Nice subtle rivets as well, they're not sort of big and chunky like some locos of this era were. And then as you can see, the underside of the tender looks great as well. Nice fine looking wheels, and then you've got the axle boxes and the suspension springs molded onto there. The coal load does appear to be removable, and yeah, you can see I can slide it up and down there just to show that it isn't fitted permanently to the tender, so that's great. And then around the back, you've got more printed detailing, including the capacity of the tender. And I'm not sure what that other one will be, but I will try and get a close up so that you can read it. The lamp brackets are just part of the molding on the tender, which is a bit inconsistent. And I suppose that isn't the only inconsistency between loco and tender because there is an M coupling on the back of the tender. And yet, as we saw in the detail bag, the coupling for the front bogey is not NEM. Now, considering that NEM couplings are a standard, I mean, they're designed to be standard so that you can pull a coupling off any locomotive and put it into another without having to worry that it won't be compatible. The fact that we have two different standards of coupling on this locomotive is just silly and outdated. I don't understand why they couldn't have just improved that so that you have a standard coupling on the front bogey as well, or indeed no coupling at all, because if they'd just have missed it out of the detail bag, I wouldn't be taking the mic like this. However, yeah, the finish of the model is fine. Look at the boiler here. It's better than some of Hornby's more modern attempts, I would say. It's not particularly glossy. I believe Hornby have done a glossy version of the Black 5. This isn't it, but the finish isn't so matte that it looks unrealistic. And like I say, overall, I do think the finish is better than on some Hornby locos. So the level of detail is okay. If it was 2005, I'd probably say this was very, very impressive. 
but it's 2021 and we have seen better models since this was made. I think if Hornby were a little bit more reasonable in the pricing of this, I might have been a bit more lenient on some of its shortcomings. But at £170 RRP and at nearly £130 for me to buy, I can't do that. I can't do that. I've got to judge it as a modern and expensive loco because that's what it was sold as. So I'm going to take a look at the mechanism. Hopefully this will be good. Then I'll get it onto the track and we will see how it runs. So there she is then down onto the track, the Hornby Railways Black 5, ready for the first ever test. Now, the mechanism is quite old fashioned, it's somewhat dated, however, it does still tick most of the boxes. And I think provided the motor inside mine is a good example, there's no reason why this shouldn't run really, really well. So first of all, we have a lot of pickups, six per rail. So as you can see, the tender does have pickups on all of its wheels. And the Loco also has wiper pickups on the driving wheels. There is some annoying red wire dangling down from the tender chassis and it is touching one of the tender wheels. So that suggests a slight wire management disaster. And if any of the tender wheels don't turn correctly, that will be what I suspect. Anyway, the serviceability of this isn't fantastic. As you can see, if I remove the base keeper plate, it's actually impossible to get the pickup plate away from the loco because they're hardwired. Modern locomotives have spring-loaded contacts, which makes the removal of that base keeper plate much more easy for maintenance purposes, so that's not too great. You can, however, see that the loco does have proper turned metal bearings on the axles, the driving axles, which is great. And interestingly, there is some compensation, as you can see, on the rear driving wheel, which is quite an interesting feature. Never really seen much advantage to that, but, you know, sure, I'll take it. Now, the chassis is quite basic, but again, I think it seems quite effective as well. We've got this five-pole motor, which has been used in quite a lot of Hornby's Locos, and they are good if you can get a good example. There is no flywheel, but then again, some Locos with this motor and without a flywheel do run incredibly well, so I guess I'll just have to see how we go. The gauging is very, very impressive. It's damn near perfect. I measured 14.4 millimeters on all of the axles, except the last one, which I was getting 14.3 on. Very slim flanges though at just 0.5 millimeters. So both the front to back and the back to back are perfectly adequate. I don't think they'll be causing any trouble with this loco. So the Black Fives were absolutely legendary runners in real life. But now then, let's find out whether Hornby's model is made to match. Now I should say this has not yet been run at all, so it hasn't been run in or anything. After an hour's running, uh, 30 minutes in each direction, the performance may be better, but straight out of the box, I'm gonna give it its first test. Are you ready? I might not even crawl to start with. Let's just turn it up a little bit roughly, see what happens. Well, it's working. <laughs> And that doesn't look too bad, does it, to say that that's its first ever movement. Uh, it's reasonably smooth, reasonably. Let's try and reverse. Let's go 50% speed. Oh, I'll tell you what, the gearing looks pretty good. That's 50% speed, so as long as nothing's catching and slowing it down, that suggests that the actual geared speed of the Loco is pretty sensible. Although, as I'm saying that, it's visibly speeding up, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, okay, so we'll we'll have to see that. I mean, we'll put a question mark next to the speed, shall we, until it's running. Come on then, just to document it, let's see what the crawl is like straight out of the box. Here we go, turning up, turning up. Ooh, do you know what? That is kind of Merchant Navy standard, isn't it? Cool. I wonder if there's any, is there much torque there? You know what, I think those wheels are still turning. They, 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 they were still turning a little bit. I mean, obviously there's gonna be some slowdown. I'm sure they were still turning. And it's always worth doing a full rotation at this speed. I know it's soul destroying, but that just shows whether or not there's any tight spots. And I'm not seeing really, I'm not seeing one. It's quite rare. It seems to be really difficult to model a locomotive with the full sort of valve gear on the outside and not get tight spots. But this one seems to be a rare example of that being exactly the case. Look at that. I think that's more or less a full rotation there. That is impressive. That's really good. Yeah, I actually really like the performance of that. That's great, that is great. And you know what? I've got other locos from this era, sort of 2000 to 2005. A lot of them run this well. 
really they do. So I have no trouble believing that these black flies from Hornby ran this well even 20 odd years ago or whenever it was that they were first released. That's really, really impressive. Let's try it around the rest of the track though, just to make sure it's, it's okay on curves and Gordon's Hill. And then I guess after it's running, I'll come back and talk to you some more. So 50% speed. Okay, let's watch it carefully around these curves. It's a good test of torque and gauge. Oh yes, not even a hesitation there. Looks like a per God, this is running as though I have already run it in. It's first run and it is faultless. That is incredible. So let's recap that. No derailments, no slowing downs on the second radius curves there, not even on the S-Bend. No slowing down up Gordon's Hill, no clicking of the valve gear. This, at the moment, seems like it's going to blossom into an absolutely incredible runner. That crawl was incredible. The 50% speed seems competent, not too fast, not too slow. It's not too noisy, really, really smooth. This is how locomotives should run. Really, really impressed with that already, already. So this is going to do 30 minutes in each direction, and I will be back with you as soon as that is done. Oh, very, very exciting. Okay, folks, I am back. Running in has finished, and wow, yes, this is way up there in terms of performance. Absolutely incredible runner. It is now running quite a lot faster than it was before. Let me do a, a run past at 50% speed. Are you ready? And this was quite weird. There you go. It's definitely faster, isn't it? Yeah, I, I was watching it. It happened as I was watching it. Just click like that. Very suddenly, it sped up. Uh, you do sometimes get that with motors. It's usually not a good sign when a loco is running slow and then suddenly breaks out and goes a bit faster. But it's not done it since, and it has been absolutely fine ever since. So no worries there. Uh, it was exactly as I said it was, really, as it did its first couple of laps. Perfectly consistent, no slowing down. And it's just the model runner. It really is absolutely fine. It's perfect. Perfect. Let's do that crawl again then, just to show you. Oh, yes, look at that. So it's still able to do that incredible crawl. Forwards. Ooh, and backwards. Look at that. It's just crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just, I would compare this to any other Loco I reviewed. If another Loco comes along and it doesn't run as well as this, this is the Loco I will now point to and say, well, the Black 5 could do it. <laughs> Yeah, it just shows, a crawl that good just shows what a good quality motor and what a good quality mechanism is inside here. That is wonderful. Less wonderful is the pulling power. I measured a pulling force attractive effort of 0.26 newtons. That's quite pathetic. The Adams radial tank was uh, more powerful than that. And that's because it's so light. Yeah, it's no surprise, but it's good to prove it. So that's only the equivalent of around 18 coaches on straight and level track, but I've set up just seven LMS coaches. I'm hoping it will at least be able to haul those up Gordon's Hill. Quite embarrassing, if not, I guess. But there's only one way to find out, so let's go and couple to them, and hopefully this loco will be able to haul five coaches. Just noticed a little bit of slack on that rear driving wheel. God, look how far the other wheels go before that one starts to move. Look at that, that's crazy. Hmm, not so keen on that, but it doesn't seem to affect the performance any. Okay, 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 come on, let's do it. Let's not get distracted. Man, look how lovely and controllable this is. Oh, oh, it's just, I mean, forget the price for a second and forget uh, the slightly basic level of detail. Oh, it's worth paying for performance like that, isn't it? It really is. Right. Come on then, let's have quite, let's do quite a severe acceleration just to see if I can produce any wheel slip. Let's move the camera for that. Ready? Let's hit it with 50% speed straight away. Oh, totally unrealistic, but quite satisfying. I am going to tone it down a little bit though. I'm going to set it down to like 35 because I think that will be a better test of its performance on Gordon's Hill. And it's also, because it's a bit faster now, it's a hair faster than I want it to be. So yeah, that will be a good challenge. On the middle line, because the uh, the Class 5 was mixed traffic loco, I've got the railroad one, talked about it loads today. Still a great runner, this one, but it has now been upstaged, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, it's got a freight train. Still a good runner, though, yeah, like I say. There we go. And I'll show you what's on the inside line. It is another Stania loco. It is the Stania Mogul. 
Now this is very similar to the Black 5, it's made by Backman instead, and this does have the die-cast running plate. It'd be interesting to compare the price actually. Uh, so yeah, yeah, bit of die-cast makes a big difference. This Loco is much heavier and much more powerful, and it's got a small passenger train as well. Okay, it's a real challenge for the Black 5, Gordon's Hill at 35 speed. Let's see if it slows down on those curves. There goes the railroad one while we're waiting. Okay, here we go. Now this is cruel, don't get me wrong, so if it doesn't do it very well, <laughs> it's probably not the Loco's fault, but ah, oh, look at that. Not a very powerful Loco with seven coaches, not even slowing down on that curve. Incredible. Surely it's going to slow down up here. You know, it's not really. It's not really. Let's see how it handles that curve at the top. You know what, there are a lot of Locos that perform way worse than that. Very, very impressed. But uh, yeah, I'm going to knock it up a bit. Let's put it to 40 for the rest of the shots. It's an absolutely outstanding runner. The, the performance has really made up for this one, actually. It was going to be quite a mediocre review. And don't get me wrong, it is still overpriced. <laughs> Let's be honest. However, the number of Locos that actually perform quite this well is quite limited. There aren't that many of them. So I feel like I've got to reflect that in the review and uh, just point out how excellent the performance really is from this. Yeah, it's amazing. Anyway, let's enjoy this running for a little while. See which other locos you can spot in the sidings. There is an odd one out. So comment below if you spot which one that is. Let's have some ratings then for the overall quite lovely Hornby Black 5. The level of detail, I mean, to be honest, it's okay. The model looks absolutely fine, but this is 2021 and the model is getting on for 20 years old. And there are some areas that definitely show it. I mean, the cab detail wasn't fantastic and the sort of tender, I guess, the, the lack of separately fitted lamp lines and such. Yeah, there were just one or two details which I think should have been better on a model that costs up to 170 pounds. The performance though, I cannot fault, 20 years old or not, the performance of this Loco is absolutely incredible, so it gets five star. Amazing crawl, really, really consistent across the entire layout. I love it, it's a wonderful performer. It is a good job that I have a separate power category though, otherwise the uh, pulling power of this Loco would seriously have dragged down the performance mark. Because yeah, 0 0.26 Newtons is not very much. That's only enough for 18 coaches on straight and level track. Even the Adams Radial Tank by Hornby was a better puller than this. And the Stania Mogul, for instance, was 0.4 Newtons. That's the pulling power of that one. It's nearly double. So not a powerful loco, unfortunately. And that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. It shouldn't be a surprise to Hornby. When you make a loco as light as this, 325 grams, it won't be a great puller. It's just pure logic, isn't it? The mechanism, though, overall, I've seen fit to give it four stars. It's a bit basic in some areas. It's not so easy to access the uh, the sort of axles and stuff. I know that's quite specialist, but you know that is something that other models do better. And the motor doesn't have a flywheel or anything like that. Having said that, the motor is very, very high quality, so the lack of flywheel doesn't matter too much. You do have the proper bearings on the wheel set, and you have all-wheel pickup except for the front bogey. So I don't have a problem with the mechanism. It's absolutely fine. No problem with them still producing this uh, 20 years or so on because it's still a great, great mechanism. The quality, I've had to knock off a star and a half. First of all, just for all of the plastic. I mean, the plastic running plate, plastic body, a little bit of metal would have made the Loco heavier, it would have made the Loco better quality, and it would have improved that desperately poor pulling power. So that's one issue. Also, a couple of glue marks, one particularly nasty fingerprint. Yep, you don't expect those, so it loses a half a mark for that. Uh, down to 3.5 star in total. Value for money, it's a similar thing, really. If this was a 2021 fully retooled Black 5 with an amazing level of detail, an incredible cab, tons of separately fitted parts, an incredible finish, blah, 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 blah then yes, this might have been worth £169.99. But as it is, it's relatively basic, it's very light, very plasticky. I just can't see the reasoning behind the 169.99 RRB, particularly compared with some of Hornby's other locos at that price point. 
this doesn't look so great. However, the performance does drag it up. It was going to be two star on the value, but because it is such an incredibly good runner, I have given it an extra star there. So yeah, maybe that's generous, but yeah, £127.49 is what I paid. That's still a little bit much, isn't it? Particularly given some of the other locos I have in my collection. Overall then, that is an overall score of 6.69 out of 10. Let's put that into the logbook. There it is then, 18th place, just above the A2 slash 2 and below the E424. Now don't forget my reviews are quite price centric. If the value for money isn't that important for you, then this model is perhaps better than what I've shown here. However, I am quite sensitive to value for money, as you know, so this score stands for me, but your mileage may vary. Overall, it's a great looking model, very, very pleased with it. Just wish it had cost me a little bit less, and I wish the price matched the model a little bit better. There you have it then, folks. That is my review of the Hornby Railways Black 5. Yeah, it's okay, isn't it? I think those are the two words I would overly use to describe this. It's okay. What would be really cool would be to see Hornby retool this, maybe make it a little bit more detailed, add that die-cast running plate, include better cab detail, modernise it a little bit. Then, if they charged 169 for it, it would be very reasonable indeed, as far as I'm concerned. However, all of this is just my opinion, so please do down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Have you got one of these? What is your experience with it? Does yours run as well as mine does? <laughs> I hope so, because, yeah, this performance is amazing. Thank you very, very much for watching. Thanks for your company. I hope you enjoyed it, as always, and I will see you again very, very soon. Okay, cheers, everybody. Take care.